Hello, virtual van again, and this week is going to be all about our hydraulic wheel bearing kits. Bit of an overview, so yeah, um, we're going to get outside in the workshop and go and have a look at what we've got. Okay, so let's have a look at the different types of wheel bearings first. And to avoid, avoid any confusion, I'm just going to give a description on a couple of bits so that we, we're all singing off the same hymn sheet. Dry flange, bearing obviously, and the bit on the car we call the hub. So we've got standard generation one wheel bearings. We've all grown up doing these. So dry flange out first, bearing out, straightforward, and reverse to put back in. On generation two, where it gets a little bit more interesting, generation two, the bearing and the flange is one unit. So you can't separate them. Some manufacturers use a clip, which is a one-time use clip, and some don't. So generation two, some people think the generation two has always got a retaining clip. That's not, that's, that's not the problem. Generation two problem, it's quite easy to show you on this one. If that was a standard bearing and you was pushing it in that way, you'd always select something to push against on the outer race to push it in. And you can't do that with them on a generation two because you can't get to it because the flange is in the way. So we have a, a kit that goes round and it pushes there on a generation two like so so that will push and i'll come to the generation two kit in a moment generation three that's generation three so they're a cassette bearing so they're bolted in place once you take the bolts out they should come out if they're not seized on the back and then we have some unusual ones so this is a gen 2 bearing this is fitted a toyota pro ace uh, Peugeot Expert, Citroen Dispatch, the new Vauxhall Vivaros and uh, the Fiat Scudos. There's no hole through the middle of the original bearing that's in the vehicle. When you buy the bearing in to replace the bearing, the, whether it's an OE one or an aftermarket one, it will have a hole through the middle. So just be mindful of this because when this problem turns up in a workshop, quite often it's a bit of a panic because no one's got the tool for doing it. So let's go through the kits. We have a Gen 1 kit, a Gen 2 kit, and a generation three kit. So generation one bearings, two and three. They all share this top bridge plate. So let's just remove these legs. Now, if you were to order a generation one wheel bearing kit from us, that's what will come. So you will need to order the bridge plate also, but that's shared throughout the kits. So you don't need this three times. So once you have this, generation one, two or three, uh, you, you can do most wheel bearings in situ, 15 to 20 minutes. So then we move on to the four stud and five stud drive shaft bridges. Once you've selected the hydraulics, which we'll go through in a minute, these are also really useful with this kit for pushing out these drive shafts on the vehicle. So we're going to pop across to the other bench and have a look at the hydraulic options. So let's take a look at these hydraulic cylinders then. There's a couple of options. Um, and it's down to preference really. So 18 ton and 22 ton, obviously more power, four ton more on this one. The advantage of this one is it's much lighter. So this is uh, 2.7 kg. This one is just over four. So it's nearly half the weight, this one. Um, the, the, more, the advantage of this one is it has a much longer stroke, which as you can see, it does make it easier to use but it is heavier. So it's a personal thing. Um, we sell lots of both. They both come with the, ad the additional accessories. So you've got the drive shaft pusher or the pusher, which we use for drive shafts, which I shall show you in a second over on the other bench. You can also upgrade the kits. So we do spindle sets. The standard spindle that comes with the kit with the, either of them is a 22 into 18 mil threaded bar. So that's how you're gonna do all your wheel bearings. The cylinder always travels that way. So you're on and you pump in and it will pull. So that's a cylinder. But what you can do is you can remove this spindle and we offer a couple of sets of spindles. So you have a drop down reducer, the nut obviously, and the spindle. And that will screw in and that will reduce the thread size. And what that gives you the option to do is any bush kits or um, cup and plate kits that you've already got from different manufacturers for doing stuff, with threaded bars and nuts. It's quite often the weakness of those kits, but you can convert that to hydraulics and use your hydraulics with your kits that you've already got as well. So you're utilizing the hydraulics. Then you have the options on the pump. So you've got two options on the foot pumps. You've got the manual foot pump. So that is plug and play, 
plug it straight into your cylinder and you're pumping away. Um, that's your pressure release, simple as that. Easy to use, straightforward, lots of feedback because you're using your pedal. Then you've got the air over hydraulic. So easier to use, um, quicker, and you've just got control, but that needs an airline feed. Again, just plug it straight into the cylinder and off you go. Both work really well. Um, that's a bit faster, slightly more expensive, um, but, but either will power the cylinders. Then we have the ball joint splitter. So this is our little 4.5 tonne universal splitter. You've got a couple of different bases there. So you've got the bigger one that side, the smaller one there, they will turn. And then you've got a wider jaw and a narrower jaw. You can also turn it upside down and you can extend the distance if it's a bigger ball joint by removing the sleeve. You can put them on this way and you can go that way. So then you have the capability of doing much bigger ball joints. So that, that will do the majority of cars. So either way, you've got your distance adjustable as well. So really useful, really, really popular. We also do some additional jaws uh, where you have a pin there for blind ball joints as well. Right, so let's get onto the other bench and uh, go and set up a couple of these bits to show you how they work. So let's have a look at the drive shaft pushing first. So you select four stud or five stud. This one's obviously a five stud. We use the wheel bolts from the vehicle. And then on the cylinder, we remove the protective cap off the back. And put in the pusher. That will locate and then that can wind out. You can put a long Allen key down and wind that out either way. So once it's in, you can adjust it from in inside. So screw that in to make the seized drive shaft. Once that's all the way home, you will then connect your pump on and away you go. That will push the drive shaft out, no problem at all. The problems on BMW and Land Rover and all those sorts of vehicles, it's a really, really powerful tool. So we never have any trouble with those. If you needed to, and it's very rare you, you need to, we do the striker. The striker comes in the kit, so you can put the striker in there, give that a tap once it's under full load, and that will increase the, the power nearly to four. So you're, you're almost pushing 70 tonne at that point on the vehicle, so you won't, you won't have a problem removing that drive shaft. Then I just want to show you a couple of specifics. So the kit can grow with you. It's important to know that the kit is just not a box of stuff and that's it. It grows over time as more problems come. So this problem here is for the Land Rover. Um, the Land Rover, the, the standard jaw will not fit on the Land Rovers. So it's a set of jaws there. That one is, is coned out to fit round the stud and the back. And then that one will go in that side. So in this case, if, you're, if you've got already the Generation 1 kit, you just need those two legs and those three plates to add to your existing kit. If you, if you wanted to just do Land Rover, we do this kit with the extra plates that you would need and the bridge, and that comes as a standalone Land Rover kit. So it's an add-on or, or, or not. Then on, on the specific wheel bearings, I just want to show you this one as well. So this one with, with no hole through the middle, it's a problem on the Gen 2, as I said, on the, the, the Peugeot and the Citroëns, etc. And we have a yoke for that one. That will bolt on, so that will be on the vehicle, like that. There's no hole to work through the middle. So we bolt that one on there. And once that's on, we put a thread in there, and then the hydraulics will then attach to that, and that will draw the bearing straight out in one go. So it, it's super fast on those ones. So that's that problem. Once you've got the pump and you're settled with that, you can then upgrade to our spring compressor. Our spring compressor is very universal, very adjustable, uses the same hydraulics, different RAM obviously, but same pump to operate it. So we'll do a separate video on the spring compressor. Um, it, it deserves it, it's that good. As you can see, there's lots to it, but we've made it as simple as we can. With the kits, you can add in as a base kit, we normally start with generation one, generation two, a hydraulic pump and cylinder, um, and the drive shaft bridges. The spindle sets we also do, um, they're, they're a nice easy upgrade. And then from there, some people choose to have generation three at the same time, and the ball joint snapper, but it's, it's entirely on budget and how much you want to do and what you want to achieve. But the whole point of all of the tooling here, we, we can do the job without the tooling on most cases. Generation two, you need a special tool, but 
the whole idea is you're going to save a lot of time in the workshop and make just make life easier for instance you're leaving abs sensors in when you're removing the wheel bearings and stuff um, you're leaving top link bolts on when when it's the vag stuff there's a lot less dismantling on the vehicle when you're doing the stuff in the press so hope that all made sense if you want any more information have a look in the description and on this stuff you may need to give us a phone call to, to get it right for what you need in your workshop we'll happily talk you through we need to know a few bits and pieces about what you want to cover give us a call on that and i'll see you next time